um, born to a very wealthy family uh, in Mallow, the Mallow area, Kilavallen to be exact. And um, she had a very um, privileged life, I suppose, in her early years. She was educated in, uh, originally in the Hedge School near Mallow and uh, then went to France where a number of her family had travelled as the part of the wild geese migration. And um, having finished her schooling in France, she stayed on uh, in the social world and really enjoyed it. Then the family circumstances changed and she came back to Dublin because her father died. But in the meantime, uh, she became aware of the inequalities in her own area in Ballygriffin, Kilavallen, and also in Paris and in Dublin, where she came to live with her mother and sister after um, her time in Paris. And um, she thought that she felt uh, that the best thing she could do would be to go to a convent in France that she was familiar with and that she'd pray for the people of Ireland. But that didn't seem to be enough. Uh, and her, she wasn't happy in herself until she came home and settled here in Cork with her brothers, her brother Joseph and his wife Frances, and she began her schools. Now it was a very daring and brave undertaking because it was the time of the penal laws and it was the Catholic schools as such were prescribed. But um, she persisted and I suppose the, she had the confidence of her early years to be able to stand up to those who wanted to undermine her operations because even the church were unfavourable to her because they didn't want to upset the balance that they had established in the, in the city at the time. And uh, then as time went on she discovered that if she needed to make the work survive that the best thing to do would be to uh, begin a group of people with like-minded with, that have, li have like minds and that was the beginning of the presentation congregation. They started on Christmas Eve in fact just four of them and it went from there. The foundation started here back in 1775 when the congregation was set up and um, since then it has impacted all over the world. There's an imprint of the presentation congregation in something like 21 countries and even yet they have over a thousand um, representatives of the congregation uh, practicing all over the world at this time. I'm convinced that the reputation that we have as a country for humanitarian purposes, for overseas aid, a lot of it comes from the work of the presentation congregation around the world. There is absolutely no doubt that they made that connection very early on. We will hope to lodge a planning application in the matter of about a fortnight or so. And what we will be doing is we will be building an archives here uh, and uh, also a heritage centre. And we will be renovating and almost rebuilding the major buildings that date back to 1771. And they will be used for accommodation for sisters and for visitors, but also for space for uh, administering the ministries, the various ministries that the Presentation Sisters are engaged in. I suppose when we looked at the site at the beginning, uh, it, it's really, we decided we'd respect all the buildings that are on the site. They've been here for 200 years, many of them, and that then we just have occasional interventions to make the whole thing work together. But our first major step was to try and link the buildings together. So we put in a new circulation spine through the building so that the existing buildings and the new buildings had this relationship between them. One of the most critical things was the uh, relocation of the Nanonagel tomb because it's so central, emotionally, spiritually, uh, with the order that um, fundamentally that had to be uh, acceptable and, uh, and work functionally and, uh, and, and be acceptable to the nuns themselves. And I, I believe we solved that, and that was quite fundamental to the whole scheme. And people who've been inspired by Nano, when they come here, they have a real sense of being in a sacred place. So that kind of that vibration, the spirit that's all here, I suppose that's something we want to, to kind of capture and enable other people in the future to be able to share something of that. Yeah. Nano Nagel is synonymous with education in Cork. And you know, when you, the name of Nano Nagel is mentioned, people don't say who was she or where did she come from. People in Cork are very much aware that she was the founder of the Presentation Orders in Cork.
but also she set the standard for education and particularly education for women in the city. On a daily basis I passed this building and to see it closed up and locked, you know, it was sad. But to come in here today to see the gates open just shows so much for the future. This uh, building, it's so important, it was such a centre of education that now into the future we continue to be a centre of education and educating people about the heritage of this whole site but also education around the ethos and the standards set by Nano Nagel so many years ago. And we all know that education is the way out of poverty and that was I suppose the driving force um, that inspired Nano Nagel when she I suppose, turned her back on a very comfortable life and uh, dedicated herself to uh, founding an order that would educate the poor. I was very conscious of the fact that the South Presentation Convent gave an enormous service, education service, to the people of Cork right down through the centuries. And the building we're in now at the moment has been closed up for seven years. And I feel it's time to renew it and give it a new purpose uh, in these the infant years of the 21st century. I, I think really it, it's, it'll take advantage of something that's already there and open it up. And so few people visit the site, uh, and it's there, we're in the middle of the city, and it'll give that dimension uh, and make people much more aware of the contribution that various people did over the, uh, over the centuries. I even look at the graves of Hitler and Nagel, and you see people in their 90s and 80s, and, and, and they, in, in many respects, followers, made a huge contribution themselves to, uh, to the life and social life of Cork at, 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 at that time. And also then, it's really steeped in the uh, 18th century in Cork, which was a time where the city had a great boom and things like that, and really grew, and it's, uh, it's the foundation for the later city. Well, I think it's fantastic because it's actually bringing Nano's vision to life. But I suppose I work in the Community Development Ministry within the site. So we've been here for the last, you know, nearly five years. So it's very exciting for the people because we've been operating in conditions where there was no conditions like when the schools closed there was 2,000 children going to school here at one stage and then you know the children got older families moved on but the nuns went out to the parishes and they said look is this a convent or is it a place we can use and kind of came out of that project was our um, project which is a community development initiative and it's based on the premise of user-led design but it's all about people designing what they want to see happening in the space so there's a community garden there's art groups, there's a youth cafe, there's a youth group, there's a drugs worker, there's the migrant centre, there's counselling, there's men's groups, there's a lot of personal development and there's a lot of creativity happening in the space. So I suppose it's exciting for us to be moving into a new phase again, but the kind of the vision, once the vision isn't lost in that meantime, that people are the centre of that space, because Nano's kind of always been more than buildings. So it's very, very exciting. It's like as if we're losing her a little bit for a few years, in the sense that the old buildings and that will be will be changed. So on the 8th of March, which is Nano's feast day, we're going to have a prayer service in the old building. Say the rooms that she would have visited, the building that she built herself. So we'll spend the 8th of March here, sort of a farewell to the old building and look forward then to the new project. It's been a long time in the dreaming and in the planning um, and I suppose this has, has been such a, a vibrant hub of ministry, of prayer, of presentation life for over 260 years so I suppose what these plans show is that this will continue into the future and our hope is that that dream, the vision, the mission of Nano will continue to, to to happen here if you like and to continue into the future so these plans are just the beginning of the next stage that we hope the next 260 years so we're looking forward to it